a very big welcome to the R Vlog with me, George Dopamine. It is Good Friday 2022, and so it's very apt that I'm about to enter the National Gallery, which you can hopefully see behind me, to preview and review the Raphael exhibition. Raphael died on Good Friday in 1520 at the very young age of 37. Despite that, he produced an enormous array of work, some of which, 89 pieces to be precise, are going to be here in the National Gallery today. Um, I cannot wait uh, to see this show because Raphael is one of the three giants of high Renaissance art, along with Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. And I have to confess, of the three, he's the one I warm to the least. He's a little bit too perfect, a bit too serene, um, a bit, uh, a bit ungnarly for me. And so, whereas I absolutely adore Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci out of those three of the High Renaissance, um, Raphael fails to warm me. I see him in galleries all over the world, and he's not someone I'm naturally drawn to. Having said that, the National Gallery are promising the first ever exhibition in England which, review, which, which covers the whole of his short but very, very productive career. And so this is going to be promising to be a monster of a show and I can't wait. Um, the show is £24 to get in um, and it runs until the 31st of July. £24 is a lot of money, but I suppose you have to put that into the context of how much a West End show would cost. It would certainly cost more than £24 for, for decent seats or a Premier League football match. And believe me, this is going to be Premier League art. So I suppose the big question for me is, will this show at the National Gallery change my mind on Raphael? Will it make me fall in love with him? Come and join me as I take you inside uh, the hallowed halls of our national treasure. highlights there from the Raphael show at the National Gallery and I must stress I couldn't take pictures of every single piece of work that I wanted to show you today because there was the dreaded no photography sign above some of them so if you want to see for example an early and lovely portrait by Raphael from um, the Uffizi in Florence then you have to come to the show and see it yourself and there was probably about a dozen pictures which I'd have definitely brought to you but I must stress uh, but I couldn't I must stress though however that the um, overall um, feeling is of, of this being an exception and an opportunity probably I'll go as far as to say a once in a lifetime opportunity to see in England in London such a range of a great Renaissance master's career the National Gallery's curators have somehow managed to um, get some outstanding loans from world-class galleries like the Uffizi in Florence, the Prado in Madrid, the Louvre in Paris, as well as many other galleries from around the world. And so it's done that, and it obviously helps as well that Britain, both the National Gallery in London, um, the Scottish National Gallery in Edinburgh have some wonderful Raphaels themselves and so they're able to complement that. So the vibe of the show is broad, it's expansive, there was eight different rooms showing 
Raphael's career um, from his early years as a sort of teenage prodigy all the way through to his death, one of his last pieces of work, the Transfiguration Altarpiece in the Vatican. Um, there is a study of one of, the, uh, one of the apostles in that, which I'll show you now. So overall, this is a wonderful show. Um, it's, it's a chance to see this artist's work um, across the whole range of his career. It was busy, by the way, and um, that's something to be aware of. Try and book going at, 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 a, at, a, at a, uh, a quieter time. I found it hard to see some of the smaller works and had to be very patient, but I was in there for about an hour. What, what about the art itself? Well, the show is at pains to, to, to present Raphael as a master of many different forms. Um, there are some wonderful, wonderful paintings, as you can hopefully see here, but there's also many drawings, there's preparatory work. It looks at Raphael as an architect, it highlights his interest in antiquity. It also shows, as you can see here from this picture, the influence of other great um, Renaissance, high Renaissance masters like Leonardo as part of the, um, as part of Raphael's world. So thoroughly enjoyed um, seeing that range. You can see here, for example, that he was one of the first artists, along with Albert Dürer, to realize that the commercial potential of print prints and this one the massacre of the innocents was a amazing um was is, is a really special example of that and you can see the emotion in the faces of these women who have lost their children we see this letter to um, leo the 10th um exploring his concerns about how rome and its classical heritage is being destroyed um, and that was really interesting to see and read the translation of as well um, the, 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 the exhibition is, is a strange hybrid of um, chron chronology. It starts with, with these examples of his early work and shows what a prodigy he was and moves through um, to his later work. But also it's sort of semi-thematic as well. There's this room, for example, on um, Madonna and Child, which is... Which is um, one of Raphael's most commissioned pieces. So yeah, it's, 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 it's well curated. I mean, the curators have done incredibly well to get some of these pictures. Um, and you get to see and sense Raphael as, 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 as this incredibly dynamic artist. The last thing I'd say in terms of art is that obviously today some artists, maybe we would say Damien Hirst, for example, are criticized for being a burst overtly commercial. and. I was so struck by Raphael's um, commercial edge. He ran a studio which had up to 50 artists and assistants working for him. Bearing in mind he died at the age of 37. And it was able to churn out many, many pieces of work. There was drawings going to Brussels to produce tapestries like this one. There, was, um, there were, there were uh, works being finished off by by assistants. Um, he was a sort of one-man business, if you like, who used his connections because he was brought up in the court in Abino and, um, and he used his connections with popes and cardinals and bankers to full effect um, to, to become the dominant figure, if you like, in the, um, in the Rome art scene. Um, the app, did it change my mind about Raphael? Well, it did, thanks to one room. The final room, room eight of the exhibition, which contained a series of portraits. Now, Raphael is not really well known as a portraitist because he was following the money and most of his commissions were on religious themes by popes and cardinals and bankers. But this room, and so, so portraits were often um, produced for, for, for personal reasons. And there's an intimacy to these portraits which sent a shiver down my spine. Yes, this first one by of Lorenzo de Medici was probably done for financial reasons. It was kind of a commission 
mission. But if you compare it to this one by Bindo Alaviti, who was a friend of, um, of, of Raphael's, and the way that he casually glances over his shoulder as if, he's been, as if he's been disturbed almost in a photograph, as opposed to formally sitting facing the portrait um, painter, it is an absolutely influenced later on my absolute favorite Rembrandt. And it revealed Raphael, as I said, as a wonderful painter of portraiture. Um, next to the Alaviti uh, portrait is this self-portrait, one of two in the exhibition, the only one I can bring you. Um, and Raphael is the handsome man on the left, and the guy on the right is Julio Romana, who was an assistant in his studio. Um, and you can see there's a bit of a power play going on. These guys are friends, but Raphael is clearly uh, senior, as you can see, um, to, to Romana. And there's, they're just looking into their eyes. This is a fantastically intimate portrait. This um, picture of Castiglione, the famous um, Renaissance thinker who wrote the Book of the Courtier, was, is another really amazing example. Castiglione is, is, is friends with Raphael, another huge figure of the Renaissance. His book is still um, read widely today, along with Machiavelli as one of the works of, 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 of Renaissance courtship. And um, there's something intimate, you get hard-headed about this portrait, um, the, the, the sort of unflinching, rather cynical gaze of somebody who, who Raphael clearly knows really, really well. And then the final, um, the final uh, exhibit of the whole show is the jewel in the crown for me. In English, it's called a portrait of a woman. And um, this is a picture of, of somebody widely believed to be Raphael's lover. And look at the intimacy, and I love the expression on her face. That 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 sort of stifling a laugh. There's clearly an in joke between the sitter and the portrait painter Raphael here. And this is a body which Raphael clearly knows very well. I have to say as well, it is a disturbing piece for a modern feminist like myself because Raphael has painted his name on a band uh, on her arm, um, which uh, suggests ownership. But generally, it's just an exquisite painting to finish the show. And I left the show after this in a buzz thinking mainly about these portraits in this final room. And for me, that was worth the admission price alone. So overall, would I, would I recommend this show? Um, yes, I would. I would give it a very solid nine out of 10. 24 pounds is a lot of money. I spent about an hour in there, but you won't get a chance to see such a range of Raphael's work again. Did it make me fall in love with Raphael? Yes, thanks to that last room it did, and due to and, into, and and also because of the intimacy and warmth that some of the um, some of the Madonnas were showing. They were different kinds of, of of painter, but there was also still that distance, that sereneness shown in these two early pictures of St George. This one of St George slaying the dragon, for example, which, which is, is all, I've always, has always given me a bit of a problem with Raphael. But overall. It's an exhibition to really um, luxuriate in. Spend an hour in the company of one of the Renaissance greats, and I promise you, you won't forget it. Keep safe, remember to subscribe to the art vlog and hit the notification bell to get more notifications of upcoming reviews of shows in London, the Southeast, the UK, and sometimes beyond.